We should cut at least six inches out of it. Nah, he'd freak, man. There is no way that we're chopping this car. 32s are pretty much the most desirable Ford hot rod. It's beautiful. It needs to just stay the way it is. Well, you want to surprise him, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> The Discovery Channel has brought some of the best shows on television, but when Vegas Rat Rods first premiered in 2014, many were skeptical about its success. However, the show quickly gained a huge following thanks to its unique concept and impressive build. If you've never seen the show, Vegas Rat Rods follows Steve Darnell and his team at Welder Up as they transform old, forgotten cars into jaw-dropping, one-of-a-kind rat rods. With each episode, viewers are taken on a wild ride as they watch the team push the limits of creativity and ingenuity to bring these vehicles to life. Despite its popularity, the show came to an abrupt end, leaving fans wondering why it was cancelled. And that's exactly what we're going to explore today. So let's take a closer look at the real reason Vegas Rat Rods ended. All right, let's go get this cool stuff. It all started with Walter Up, an automotive garage specializing in making hot rods in Las Vegas, Nevada. The term rat rods in the name of the show refers to the early hot rods of the 1940s, 50s, and early 60s. The shop is run by Steve Darnell and his sons, Cash and Chase. The rest of the shop comprises crew members that keep changing over the years. Darnell and his crew at Welder Up were approached with the idea of a reality TV around the work they did at the shop, and the TV series was born. The show initially aired only in Canada, even though it was centered in a prominent American city. Because the show was Canadian, they were required to have a Canadian cast member as part of Discovery Canada's programming. Cast members Grant Swartz, Twiggy Talent, and Cheyenne Ruther were all Canadian to fulfill their requirements. As the show's popularity grew, it became more than just another Canadian show and grew to be well-loved on American TV. Steve Darnell hailed from Montana. At the age of seven, he learned how to drive a stick at his uncle's ranch, as the workers would be at the back of a truck along with the hay to feed the cows. When he visited his grandfather in Utah, the old man would bring Steve along and sit him on his lap, letting him drive the truck. His father was said to be an iron worker who later established his own steel company called Economy Steel in Las Vegas. Every summer, Steve would be at his father's shop, and it was like being in school, as he learned from him and developed many skills through the years, including operating a forklift and other equipment, as well as fixing anything that was broken. His first car was a 1973 Orange Datsun. He mowed lawns to save enough money to buy a red line bicycle that only had a frame and a rear wheel for $80. After he restored and customized it, he sold it for $300 and used the money to purchase the Datsun from a guy's backyard. It had problems, so he went to a junkyard whose owner gave him the parts he needed, knowing he was broke. Once it was fixed, he said he drove it every single day during his freshman year in high school, even without a license, and no matter how difficult difficult it was as it had no power steering. He said there was nothing quite like being young and independent of having the freedom to buy his own vehicle with his hard-earned money. He made serious money out of fixing motorcycles and dirt bikes, as well as building and selling bicycles and go-karts. It was said that his first client was his wrestling coach in high school, who asked him to build a bike that he would give to his daughter at Christmas. Steve built one, and it was said that it was passed down to the daughter's own kids. Before he graduated from high school, he was buying, fixing, and selling cars. He worked for his father until 2001 or 2002, when he was ready to start his own business which he called Welder Up, and offered services from welding farm equipment to manufacturing tractor parts. Before he knew it, he was also building rat rods at night for fun. The show's success was due to its unique concept of creating rat rods that were made out of scraps, old engines, and parts. The crew at Welder Up would take these old, rusted, and seemingly useless cars and turn them into masterpieces. Viewers loved the creativity and ingenuity that went into every build, and the show quickly gained a loyal fan base. As the show gained more popularity, Steve Darnell and his crew became well-known figures in the automotive industry. They were invited to participate in various automotive events, and the demand for their rat rods grew exponentially. Before Discovery Channel came with the proposal for a reality TV show, Welder Up was already a successful garage. When Steve agreed to the deal for the TV show with Discovery Channel, many crew members weren't exactly ready for what that meant. Discovery Channel's focus wasn't on the cars, they just wanted to film a certain number of episodes in a certain period, so they could have a full season. Despite the success of the show, it came to an end in 2018 after four seasons. Fans were left wondering why the show ended, especially since the fifth season was already scheduled for 2020. The reason for the show's cancellation was not officially announced, but there are several theories as to why it ended. One theory is that the show was becoming too expensive to produce. The cost of creating these unique vehicles and the labor that went into every build may have been too high for the network to justify. 
Another theory is that Steve Darnell and his crew may have simply gotten too busy with other projects. As their fame grew, they were invited to participate in other automotive events, which may have taken up too much of their time to continue filming the show. Another reason why the show had to end was that it was very demanding on some of the cast members. Running a shop like Welder Up is a lot of work, and having an entire camera crew trying to document everything makes it even harder to get anything done. Also, Discovery Channel style and Target was a problem for crew members like Grant Schwartz. Grant had a very hard time on the show. When he came up to film for the second season, it wasn't easy. He had to leave his shop and his family for several months to film. Another reason for problems on the show was Discovery Channel's rule for at least a single Canadian cast member. Since the show started out as a Canadian show, it was required to have a certain quantity of Canadian talent so it could receive funding. The show's producers fixed this problem with the Canadian cast member rule, which was great because it brought new faces to the show and kept the Canadian feel in the show. However, behind the cameras, things weren't going well. The problem was that Steve Darnell still had to run his shop like a tight ship, and throughout the seasons of the show, the producers always made him adjust to different crew members. This was a problem because different people had different work styles and levels of performance that the whole crew needed to adjust to every time. The fresh new faces and Canadian feel was present but it affected the day-to-day -day operations of Welder Up. The last straw that broke this show was the exit of Cheyenne Ruther. After replacing Twiggy Talent, who had to return to school in the third season, Cheyenne was absent for the fourth season. Cheyenne's loss was a blow to the team as she brought a lot of experience to the team. While on the show, she was the only woman and the lone Canadian, and her exit disappointed many of the fans. Well, there were also rumors that the show ended due to conflicts about Steve Darnell and the network. However, there is no concrete evidence to support this theory. Although Vegas Rat Rods may be over, Steve Darnell is still keeping busy with his new video series called Welder Up Make It Run Again. In this show, he and his mechanic Merlon search for decommissioned vehicles and bring them back to life by repairing and modifying them. The entire process is broadcast live on their social media pages, and viewers can bid on the finished products through their auctions page. The show has been a hit with fans, and Welder Up has its own YouTube channel with over 160,000 subscribers and nearly 14 million views. Fans of Vegas Rat Rods can still get their fix by visiting the Welder Up showroom in Las Vegas. Some of Steve's famous Rat Rods are on display, and he even offers private tours to groups of people. Visitors can also purchase Welder Up merchandise, including sweatshirts, t-shirts, cups, and a Welder 101 metal kit. Despite the show's end, Steve Darnell and his crew continued to create unique rat rods and participate in automotive events. They even started their own YouTube channel where they continue to share their passion for rat rods with their fans. While the real reason for the cancellation of Vegas rat rods may remain a mystery, fans can still enjoy the incredible builds created by Steve Darnell and his talented crew at Welder Up. And who knows, maybe one day we will see them back on our screens, creating more amazing rat rods for all of us to enjoy.